Okay, what we are working on here, guys, is the second half of the 1.1 notes. We're calling it 1.1 part two. So now, all of a sudden, we are distributing and we're combining like terms. So it's still pretty straightforward, I hope. Hopefully it's pretty easy. So today we're gonna to talk about doing distributing and combining like terms all at once. Then we're gonna do an application with perimeter and an application with area for that. So the first thing I want you to see is when you have a negative on the outside, just a minus sign there, I want you to think of that as a negative one times the quantity x plus three. And then there's this plus five x. So this negative one on the outside has to get distributed to everything on the inside. So this is gonna become negative one x, negative one times positive three is minus three. And then notice I still have this plus five x. So that's only my first step. So I guess this one was a little tricky because I had to realize that's a negative one. And now I had to distribute it. And now I have to combine my like terms. So my guys that are the same are the x's. So remember, you take the sign of whatever comes before it. So it's a positive 5x and a negative 1x. So I just need to add those things together. Negative 1 plus 5 is positive 4x and then minus 3. Now, when I were doing these in buzz, I asked you to write them in standard form. Standard form says you take the biggest x, you put that one first, and then you go in decreasing exponents. So this 4x comes first and the minus three comes second um, because the three doesn't have a variable. Now, this is the same thing as 4x plus negative three. We don't wanna write that in buzz. We just wanna write 4x minus three. Okay, let's try this next one. So now, when I look at this next one, the first thing I have to do is I have to distribute this negative four to everything in the parentheses that it's touching. Not, you guys, the 3m all the way on the right because that isn't touching it. The negative four is only touching the 5m and the two. So it's negative 20m, because four times five is 20, so negative four times 5m is 20m. And then negative four times positive two is a negative eight. So I just write minus eight. And then don't forget, a lot of times people just forget about this other part plus 3m. That's my first step. That's work I would expect to see when you're working this out as well. And now I can look at the things that are the same. My m's are the same. Same variable, same exponent means they're like terms. So you take the sign of what comes before it, negative 20m plus 3m, and that's negative 17m minus 8 because we didn't have any to combine with. And that's already in standard form. Okay, let's try this next one. This is practicing these. So this is stuff we learned the other day, but we're putting it all together now. So as I look at this first one, I have to take the two and I have to distribute it, distribute it, apply it to everything in those parentheses, but only the stuff that it's touching, not the 5x squared and the minus 13x. So this becomes 2x, 2 times 4 is 8. So that's 2x plus 8. Now, the rest of this is just plus 5x squared minus 13x. So my job is to find out what are my like terms. So x's go together. So this 2x and the negative 13x, those are like terms. This positive 8 is a constant. He doesn't have any friends that he goes with. And this 5x squared is its own kind of term. You guys, like terms have to have the same exponent and the same variable. So x and x squared are not like terms. So combine the, the guys that are the same. 2 minus 13, that's negative 11x. Sometimes when I'm working with these, I will put a slash through the ones that I've taken care of so I don't get confused, especially when there gets to be a lot of it. Plus 8 plus 5x squared, but you know what? That's not in standard form. So as I talk about this in buzz, I say, I'd really like you to put it in standard form. What does that mean? Take the biggest exponent first. So that's this x squared guy. So first, I'm gonna say 5x squared, then minus 11x, taken care of, plus eight. And that's gonna be the way I'm gonna type my answer into buzz. 
Okay, last example like this. So this is what we need to look at here. This is not eight. You cannot take that six and that two and add them up together first because the two is being multiplied. So multiplication comes before addition. So the first thing you have to do is distribute that two. So it's just six plus, when I distribute the two, it's two a, two times a, and two times a is 16. Now, that's my first step, but don't fall for the trick. Careful, this one is kind of tricky. A lot of people get that wrong because they try and add the six and the two first. Now, I'm ready to see what are my like terms. So six and 16 are like terms, and the two a is its own kind of guy. It's a different kind of term, so it doesn't have anything to go with. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up the six and the 16, and I have 26 plus two a, but remember, I wanna write it in standard form, so I wanna put the a's first. So two a plus 26 is the way I would prefer that you write that in buzz. Okay. Okay, so you guys, perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So you can find the perimeter by adding up all the sides, but all the sides. So if this side here is five, this side over here is five. And if this side here is eight, this side over here is eight. So I can say five plus five plus eight plus eight, and I can get that my perimeter is 26 inches. I would need 26 inches of feet of, excuse me, of fence if I was going around this. Now, I know the answer is 26 inches. Let me show you another way to get that. There's actually a formula that we could learn about perimeter, and it says the perimeter is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. Now, I use a cursive L because otherwise the L looks like a one, and you might think it's 21. So one of these is the length and one is the width, and I can plug them in for W, and plug them in for L, the length, and I can solve for the perimeter that way. So if I said this is two times eight plus two times five. Now this is just using numbers. So you're like, this is so easy. This is 16 plus 10, and behold, I get the same exact answer, 26 inches to find the perimeter. So I showed you how to do this with a real simple problem so that now we can do one and we can do it with algebraic expressions in it. Okay, so first things first. If I wanted to, I could say, well, gosh, this is the width, it's 3x minus 4. So that means this side here is 3x minus 4. And this part here is 7x plus 2. So in a rectangle, this is also 7x plus 2. And the perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So I could just say the perimeter is equal to 3x minus 4 plus 3x minus 4 plus 7x plus 2 plus 7x plus 2. I'm just adding up all the sides. Let's find our like terms. What do we have going on here? So 3x and 3x a positive 3x and a positive 7x and a positive 7x. They are like terms. And minus 4, minus 4, plus 2, and plus 2. Those are like terms. So if I just combine all my like terms, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13, 20, that gives me 20 negative 4 and negative 4 is negative 8, plus 2 is negative 6, plus 2 is negative 4. So my perimeter, my simplified expression for the perimeter is 20x minus 4. Now, we're in algebra, so let's actually practice using the formula to do this. This is the answer, and if that's how you go about doing it, that's absolutely fine, but I want to show you how to use a formula to do this. 2 times L plus two times W. So this is the length 
the length is here and the width is here. So 2 times 7x plus 2 plus 2 times 3x minus 4. And I can solve this. Once I look at this, this part here is the 2 times the w, the width. And this part here is 2 times the length. So when I do this, I better get the same answer. I know what the answer is. It better be 20x minus 4. Let's work it out and see. Here, I'm distributing. Look at this. It's an application of the distributor property. 14x, 2 times 2 is 4. Now i got to do this part. Distribute. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Now, that's slightly simplified, but not all the way simplified. I want you to get all the way. So 4x, 14x, and 6x are like terms. They're both positive. So 14 and 6 is 20x. And positive 4 and negative 8, they're like terms. So plus 4 and minus 8 is minus 4. And you're like, hey, would you look at that? Of course they're the same. That's so great, right? Okay, what I have going on here now in this last example is finding the area. So the area is how many, oh goodness, I closed the thing. Uh-oh, did I lose it? Here it is. Come on. Okay, the area is just finding how many little tiny squares there are inside there. So the area of a rectangle is just the length times the width. So it is 8 times 5 because here's the length and here's the width. And that is going to give me 40 inches squared. So if I could draw little tiny squares in here, there'd be 40 of them if I had 8 by 5. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to find the area of this big rectangle. Okay? So as I look at that, I say, well, gosh, what's the formula again? Just the length times the width. So the trick here is realizing when you go to do this and you're plugging in the length times the width, this 2 has to get multiplied by everything here. So put that whole width in parentheses because the 2 has to get multiplied by all of it. So that's part of the a big part of the understanding here is realizing that you need these parentheses. This is the thing I want to make sure you get. I think you came into this knowing how to find the area of a rectangle. But now that we're using expressions and the directions, we got to get really good at solving and following directions. Give me a simplified expression. So that means distribute that out. 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 11 is 22. Now, if I had units, they would be squared. I don't have units here, so my answer is just 6x plus 22. I hope part 2 of this 1.1 is going well. Reach out to us, your teachers, if you have any questions.